Welcome to the last month at the Federal Circuit, a look at recent Federal Circuit decisions impacting the intellectual property community. Finnegan partner Kathleen Daly joins us now to take a look back at important IP related cases in 2018 and what impact they may have. Now, Kathleen, what's something that we learned from 2018? Starting with the Supreme Court, one thing we learned is that the Supreme Court continues to take an interest in Federal Circuit cases. Important decisions came down last year in Oil States Energy versus Green and SAS versus Iancu. Both cases stemmed from the PTAB. They also issued a decision in Western Gecko versus Ion Geophysical involving patent damages. In terms of the number of cases from Federal Court of Appeals that the Supreme Court will hear this term, the Federal Circuit is fifth behind only the second. 6th, 9th, and 11th circuits. So it's, it's clear that the Supreme Court's interest in the federal circuit continues. And from these decisions, in particular the oil states and SAS decisions, we see support for the view that the Supreme Court is continuing to devalue patents. But at the same time, the Western Gecko case is generally viewed as a win for patent owners in terms of the damages that can be recovered for patent infringement. And what kind of impact have these cases had so far? Oil states and SAS have had a big impact so far. Some thought that oil states and SAS could end up severely limiting IPRs, but instead those decisions are viewed as benefiting the parties who wanted the IPRs in the first place, the parties challenging patents. In oil states, the Supreme Court confirmed that IPRs are constitutional and that the validity of a patent need not be tried to an Article III court or a jury. This is viewed as further diminishing a patent's value as a property right. And in fact, in finding that patent validity need not be tried to a jury, the Supreme Court called patent rights a public franchise, not a private property right. This is a further devaluation of patents as a property right. In SAS, the Supreme Court held that when the Patent Office institutes review in an IPR, it must decide the patentability of all claims that have been challenged. In this case, the Supreme Court essentially ended the practice of partial institutions where the PTAB would institute review on only some challenge claims. Again, this decision is viewed as benefiting the petitioners, not the patent owner, as it makes it easier to implement review of all challenged claims. SAS has also had an immediate impact on the federal circuit. Many of the pending appeals to the federal circuit were from cases where the PTAB had only partially instituted a review. In those cases, the PTAB had only issued a final decision on some of the challenged claims. And since the Supreme Court has held that the PTAB must issue a decision on all challenge claims, the federal circuit remanded these cases back to the PTO so that the PTAB could consider all claims. That led to a lot of cases being sent from the federal circuit to the PTO without an argument or decision. The other Supreme Court decision in Western Gecko is also expected to have an impact. This is a case that applies to components shipped and sold overseas. There, the Supreme Court held that a patent owner can get foreign lost profits or damages when the patent owner proves infringement under Section 271F2, meaning that the patent owner proves an infringer is exporting components of an invention for combination of broad. In other words, the court held that a patent owner can get damages for infringing exports. In a time when many see patent rights diminishing, this case is a win for patent owners and is a decision that seems to increase patents value by increasing possible damages. Can you discuss a few of the cases in which the Supreme Court granted cert in 2018? Of the cases that the Supreme Court will hear from the Federal Circuit, two are veterans cases and the other case is a patent case. The two veterans cases that the Supreme Court will hear are of particular interest to us because we have a veterans pro bono program where we take cases on behalf of veterans at the Court of Appeals for Veterans Claims and at the Federal Circuit. So we follow these cases closely. These cases can also have a broader impact on administrative agencies generally because it involves a question of administrative law. The two cases are Kaiser v. Wilkie and Gray v. Wilkie. In those cases, the Supreme Court will be examining what deference courts should give to an administrative agency's interpretation of ambiguous regulations and whether the Federal Circuit can review the VA's interpretation of its own regulations. The patent case is return mail versus the Postal Service. In that case, the question presented is whether the government should be defined as a person who can petition for review proceedings under the American Events Act, referred to as the AIA. So based on these cases, the Supreme Court will again have a busy term looking at Federal Circuit cases. You've talked about the Supreme Court. What have we learned from the Federal Circuit decisions last year? 
Well, one thing we learned is that patent eligibility, patent eligible subject matter, what can be patented, remains one of the biggest issues and will likely be one of the biggest issues for the next year until we get some action from either the Supreme Court and or Congress. The Federal Circuit issued two important decisions on this topic, and we've discussed these in prior podcasts. One is Berkheimer versus HP, and the other is Atrix Software versus Greenshade Software. These cases made it clear that there can be factual issues in a patent eligibility determination such that these decisions may not be amenable to summary judgment or determinations on patent eligibility at the pleading stage in some of these cases. Mike Jakes gave an update on Berkheimer last month, and as he noted, a petition for certiorari has been filed in that case. And I can further update you that since he spoke, the Supreme Court has asked for the Solicitor General's views on certiorari. That means if the court does take up Berkheimer, it won't be heard this term. Another case of interest from the Federal Circuit last year was the decision in NatWest v. Iancu. That was an in-bake decision, and in this case, the Federal Circuit made it clear that time bar determinations are appealable in PTAB decisions. For an inter-party review, a party has one year to file a petition for inter-party review from the time it or someone in privity with it is served with a complaint. The Federal Circuit's determination that it can review whether a petition is time-barred is significant because otherwise there would be no way to have the PTAB's decision reviewed. The law on this issue would come solely from the PTO without any guidance from the Federal Circuit. We've taken a look at some of the most talked about cases from the last year, but what about other cases? Were there any that may have been overlooked? There were also cases that didn't receive as many headlines as the cases we've discussed, but did generate a lot of interest on our blog about Federal Circuit decisions. I think these cases were of interest because they address specific practice issues that practitioners can implement rather than just broad legal questions. They, they really gave practical advice to heed and to use in practice. Now give us an example of such a case. One such case is acceleration Bay versus Activision Blizzard. In that case, the Federal Circuit confirmed a finding that two claim terms were not substantive limitations of the claims because they appeared in the preamble. In this case, the claims at issue, there was no transition term such as comprising, clearly delineating what is the preamble from what is the body of the claim. The patentee there had argued that because there was no preamble, the two terms at issue were part of the body of the claims and should be given patentable weight. The court disagreed, though, and they found that they were part of the preamble, even though there was no transition word such as comprising, and thus the Federal Circuit held they were not given patentable weight. This shows that if a patentee wants to be sure that a term is treated as a limitation, that it is going to be given patentable weight, it should clearly delineate between the preamble and the body of the claim. It warns, do not omit the transition word between the preamble and the body of the claim. In fact, the Federal Circuit expressly cautioned patentees to avoid such poor claim drafting by including a transition word. So this decision really does give some real practical advice to practitioners that they can use in practice. In the Acceleration Bay case, the court also gave guidance on what is needed to show whether a document is accessible and thus a printed publication under Section 102. And we discussed that aspect of the case in an earlier podcast. Were there any other examples? Sure. Another case that really was of interest on our blog is Excelon Pharmaceutical versus Mattel. And here there was a dispute over when national stage examination began, which impacted whether there was a patent term adjustment or what the patent term adjustment was. National stage patent examination of an application claiming priority to a PCT typically begins 30 months from the priority date of the international application. But you can start that national stage examination earlier by making what's called an express request under 35 U.S.C. Section 371F. The PTO, in fact, has a form with a checkbox on it for this express request, expressly asking for the earlier national stage examination. In this case, the patentee did not check the box, but stated on the form that it earnestly solicits early examination allowance of these claims. The PTO did not accept this as an express request, and the Federal Circuit affirmed that decision. The Federal Circuit noted that the PTO form is an option and didn't require that parties actually use the PTO form, but did state that a patentee needs to more clearly make its request. 
I think the takeaway from this is to really make sure that you either check the box that's on the form or expressly reference Section 371F and state that it is an express request to begin national examination. So this is another case that provided some clear practical guidance to practitioner. And I think both of these cases, and I think this is why they generated some interest on our blog, is that both of these cases are great reminders of the importance of attention to detail. The details matter, even the smallest one, and they can make the difference in a case. And I think that you know what we can learn from last year is that both some of the big and small cases issued by the Federal Circuit can really have an impact on our practice. Our guest has been Kathleen Daly, a partner at Finnegan, one of the largest IP law firms in the world. For more commentary on intellectual property news and issues, to listen to other podcasts, and to receive additional information on the firm, please visit www.finnegan.com. Thank you for listening to this podcast from Finnegan.